I am R. Prabha, Assistant Professor in the Department of EC, SNS College of Technology. In this video, we are going to see the topic Optical Sources, LED and ILD Characteristics. So, the two light sources most commonly used in optical fiber communication are one is LED, the light emitting diode and another one is ILD, injection layer diode. So, here LED is made from a material such as aluminium gallium arsenide or uh, gallium ar arsenide phosphorus and light is emitted uh, from the LED when holes and electrons recombined and in ILD injection la laser diode it is similar in construction with LED but its ends are highly polished to reflect photons back and forth and uh, now we are going to see the first type of uh, uh, light emitting diode so the basic led operation uh, we know already see that when electrons and holes are recombined the light is emitted from the led so in the first diagram so we have uh, an anode and cathode that is the diode uh, led symbol and uh, the second one is uh, its a uh, structure and a third one is its uh, construction so it consists of a p type and active region and n type in between p and n type it consists of an active region and uh, base in the base it has a substrate here uh, the green color uh, dots represents the electrons and red color represents the holes so the light is emitted from the led when electrons and holes are recombined and uh, the light emitting diode is uh, many types and for uh, it, uh, they are planar LED, dome LED, surface emitter LED and edge emitter LED and uh, the fiber optics uh, for better communication the LED should have higher radiance, high intensity and fast response time and high quantum efficiency. So, the basic LED operation, it is a PN junction and an active region or recombination region. So, here when the PN junction is forward biased, what happens is electrons and holes are recombined either radiatively that is emitting photons or non-radiatively that is emitting heat. So, this is a simple LED operation. So, this can be shown in the diagram. And here the emitter wavelength depends on the band cap energy and transitions can take place from any energy state in another either band to any state in the other band. So this results in a range of different wavelengths produced in this spontaneous emission. This accounts for the fact that LEDs produce a range of wavelengths. So typically uh, it is about 80 nanometer and so. So, this is the LED structure working is shown in the diagram. So, the rec uh, when the holes and electrons are recombined, uh, recombination region, uh, from that the light is emitted. And uh, the light is emitted at the side of carrier re uh, recombination which is primarily close to the junction. So, moreover the amount of radiative recombination and the emission area with when the structure depends upon the semiconductor materials used and the fabrication of the device. So, some of the features of LED are it emits incoherent light through spontaneous emission and used for multi-mode systems with 100 to 200 megabits per uh, second rates and it has a broader spectral width and wide output pattern and it can work at 850 nanometer region with gallium arsenide and aluminium gallium arsenide and in between 1300 to 1550 nanometer region uh, the materials used are indian gallium arsenide phosphorus and indian phosphorus and uh, next is the homo junctions here uh, the p type and n type uh, from the same material and it is called homo junction led and here uh, the carriers are not confined uh, when it is homogeneous uh, when P type and N type are at the same material. In this diagram here P and N are from gallium arsenide 
so there will not be any recombination and light is not confined and the structure and index of refraction in gallium arsenide with the junction with T. So an LED should have high radiance light intensity, fast response time and a high quantum efficiency for uh, fiber optic system. So these three characteristics an LED should have for uh, better optical fiber operation. And another type we go for uh, an LED structure is heterojunction. So heterojunction is the advanced junction design to reduce the diffraction loss in the optical cavity. So this is accomplished by modification in the material to control the index of refraction of the cavity and the width of the junction. So the index of refraction of the material depends upon the impurity used and the doping level. The heterojunction region is actually lightly doped with p-type material and has highest index of refraction. And the n-type material and the more heavily doped p-type material both have lower indices of refraction. So what happens is these two types of materials produces light pipe effect that helps to confine the light to the active region in the homojunction. So however this index difference is low and uh, much light is lost and uh, double or single heterojunction uh, with better light output. So now the assessment. So DAS is used when the optical emission results from the application of electric field. The answer is electro -elimination, eliminations and the population inversion is obtained at the PN junction by heavily doping of both P-type and N-type material. Thank you.